All right, so let's continue with standing waves. We were just looking at open closed uh, waves and we've drawn them. Uh, let's take a look then at what the length is compared to the wavelength. So again, if this is the length right here, then we could say that this is, if you look at this, it's like this one, only it's half of it. So we've only got half of a wavelength. So from there, oh, sorry, it's half of a half. So in this case right here, we have, this is only one quarter. So it's lambda over four. That's because we need four of these. So one, two, three, four to go all the way around and do a whole wave. Uh, this one right here we have, well, it helps to count in quarters because this may look a little bit weird here. So I'm going to count in fourths. In other words, one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. So three lambda over four. And last one I have, if you take a look here, one, two, three, four, five quarters. So five lambda over four. So that's the second situation where we have open and closed. In other words, one end open and one end closed. So that could be, like I said, a trumpet, a tuba, something like that, a saxophone. Those all work like this. But we can also have something where it's open, open. This could be a type of flute. Um, I'm not sure what it's called, but you know the kind of flute where it goes this way and you blow across it? There's an open end here and an open end over here. I don't know if it's called a piccolo. I know there's different names and I'm sure you're a, you know a lot more about music than I do. But um, what I like is the physics behind it is really neat because when you're blowing, by the way, I've tried to, uh, to make a sound out of this uh, type of flute and I cannot do it. I can't even make anything happen. So maybe you know how, but uh, I certainly can't make it work. But musicians who know what they're doing, they can create a standing wave in this flute. So this time we're going to have open, open. In other words, it's going to be a little tube like this. Let's take a look at that one. Um, it probably would help if I had made these the same length, but oh well. So this one right here then, this first one's going to have one node in the middle. The next one's going to have two nodes equally spaced. And the next one's going to have three nodes equally spaced. So then what we can do is take a look at how to draw these. So um, I'm going to remember the rule is for an open end is it has to be sort of at the top. It's not a node. It's actually what we call a, um, well, some people call it an anode. I would be very careful about that or an antinode, sorry. I wouldn't call it anode though, because uh, I like that word reserved for electricity when we have a cathode and anode. But I remember uh, one of my teachers called it an anode. Uh, I've heard someone else call it an antinode, but basically somewhere where the string is not still. So here, for example, we could make it go like this and maybe pass through this. So that would be the first harmonic or the fundamental. And the next one then could be something like this maybe. I'll just make the dotted line versions, of course. And then something that goes like this. It just goes up and down and up. Now take a look then at um, what the length is. So here, just need a white chalk. Um, if I'm going to look at this then, take a look. It may not be obvious to you, but we actually have half of a wavelength. Because if I took this piece and this piece, you know, the, from end to end, and if I sort of did a cut and paste job, so to speak, um, then I would actually not be able to have a whole wavelength, so it doesn't work. But if I had this plus another piece going back down, that whole thing would make me a whole wave. That's usually how I think of a full wavelength, is if I could take this piece, and you know, like on a computer, you can do copy and paste. If you could do that with whatever you're looking at, if you could take it and then just you know, paste it at the end of itself and at the end of itself, and it would make a nice wave, then you have a wavelength. You have a full wavelength. Here, though, I don't. If I cut and paste this piece, put it here, it wouldn't work. But if I had the extra little piece going down, I took that, that would work. So I have half of a wavelength here. I actually have half. Or you could think of it as I have two quarters. Right? Two quarters is the same thing as a half. So if I'm counting by halves, then I've got, uh, right here I could say then, I've got one half and I've got two halves. So here I have a whole wavelength. And then I could count again by these right here and say, well, this is one half, 
two halves, three halves. So this is lambda over, whoops, three lambda over two. So this is how you would deal with um, standing wakes. The other uh, important equation that I still want to point out is do not forget this one. This one is your friend. This is uh, what some people call the wave equation. Okay, so everything here, they all use the wave equation as well. So you might be given a question like, um, oh, in a trombone or you know, some sort of instrument, you create the second harmonic has a wavelength of blah, blah, blah. Uh, then they could ask you, um, you know, to find the length of it, length of the tube. Or maybe they do something opposite where they give you the length and they ask you, you know, how fast is the speed of sound? You're like, whoa, what? How do I get speed of sound from this? This is how. You use this equation right here. So V would be the speed of sound in this case. Or if it was light doing something, then you would have uh, C would be uh, the speed. But almost always when you're looking at these things, you've got speed of sound or speed of a water wave or something like that. But it's usually speed of sound. Um, although sometimes it can be just what's the speed of the wave through the string. That can be the case as well. But you know, though, that the frequency of the sound um, and the wavelength are related to the speed. Or you could say the frequency of oscillation of the string and the wavelength of the string are related to the speed of the wave through the string. So this wave equation, V equals F lambda, is really your friend. Um, it's used very often in an exam situation. They usually won't just ask you to draw all these. This will be basically the first step. So they'll give you something where it's implied that you can just figure it out. So this is, this is what I would try to do, and try not to memorize it. If you can just come up with them yourself, like I just did, uh, even better. You shouldn't uh, sort of be wasting you know, valuable space in your brain memorizing this. Hopefully you can come up with it yourself, like I just did. Uh, and remember, this one here is in your data booklet, so you don't have to memorize that one. And so that is uh, how we deal with standing waves. And it reminds me of a really lame joke, actually, of, uh, uh, with a wave. And it goes like this. If you saw a light wave, would you wave back? Oh, that's bad. Um, I think I said that in the last one in the uh, waves as well from the SL. But I couldn't resist. I have to share these dumb jokes with you whenever I can. But uh, that's um, standing waves.